So far, our generation has failed to adequately address our climate crisis, and I hope your testimony today will galvanize us to act now before we are truly out of time. My name is Vic Barrett. I'm 20 years old, and I'm one of the 21 youth plaintiffs in the Juliana versus United States constitutional lawsuit, suing the executive branch of the federal government for knowingly causing climate change. It took me a second to wrap my head around it. I was like, wait, like, we're going to sue the US federal government? Like, <laughs> can we do that? <laughs> My name is Kelsey Cascadia Rose Juliana. I'm 23 years old. My name is Shitesca Donati Martinez. I'm 19 years old. My name is Levi Dreheim. I am 11 years, wait, no, I'm 12. <laughs> I, it's so hard to remember this now. This case has helped the world take our generation seriously uh, because even <laughs> when all the odds are stacked against us and we're up against the most powerful governments on earth and the most powerful industries on the planet, have billion dollar industries, um, we are prevailing. I have not come to offer any prepared remarks at this hearing. I am instead attaching my testimony. It is the IPCC Special Report on Global Warming. I am submitting this report as my testimony because I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. I'm a first-generation Garifuna American. My people are an Afro-Indigenous community from the eastern coast of Central America in Honduras and Belize. As temperatures increase, sea levels rise, storms become more intense and frequent, and the coral reefs and fisheries upon which we depend disappear. The oceanfront land that my family has inhabited for generations and that I'm supposed to inherit will be underwater if the U.S. federal government continues to promote a fossil fuel-based energy system. So I'm going to quickly run through our schedule for today. And at 2 p.m. we're going to meet in front of the Supreme Court and we're going to go over the logistics for the press conference. That's the one where it's going to be you guys and Greta and some members of Congress. We got some amazing pizza that's going to be delivered here at the house around 11.30. Pizza? Pizza. I even got some gluten-free vegan pizza for you. Most kids, they're like, the world's going to end. I lost a Fortnite game. What will I do? I know that they really like games, but they're not going to have chances to play games if they are not going to have a future on this planet. Levi's a ball of energy, so much energy. He's running around all the time. Like, and sometimes it's like hectic, and like, hey, Levi, like, chill out. But then I realize, like, nah, like, that's what this is about, low key. Like, this is why, this is what gives me energy to keep doing this because of kids like him who sacrifice a lot. It's a lot. And I see him, and I, f I feel bad in a lot of ways, too, that he's had to do as much as he has at his age. But like little homies out here running around, staying up at the press conferences, saying his part like, yeah, I gotta wake up early and catch this flight to be out there to play my part as well. This has literally been a third of my life that I've been dedicating to taking climate action and to be saving our future. It's hard to not constantly feel resentful and extremely disappointed that as young people we have to be in this role, that we have to leave school, that we have to say no to extracurricular activities because we will miss too much of them to be involved in the first place. That we have to not follow career paths of our interests because we know that we're called to something greater. How is that vegan? Right. I missed a lot of school <laughs> for this and so I decided to just take this semester off. And I always think about sometimes like if the climate crisis wasn't a thing, like, what would I do? Because right now my whole life is kind of dependent on the fact that the climate crisis is a thing. And I think that like, I always say that I'd study art history or something, or like be a curator at a museum. I'd really love to do that. Y'all have really been there since the beginning, since the beginning of this, of this case and of this work. And I want to appreciate y'all just for the sacrifice. And I know, like Juliana, like 
that name being, you know, tied to the case and like you being like so much more than that to me, like as a friend and, and as a person that I've known to love and, and be connected with, I'm, I'm really proud of all of us. So something I do before my shows, just like, so you bring everybody together, so we put our right hand in the middle and then you put our touch fingers like that and then you wrap to the right. Then go earth below, sky above, spread that love. I feel old. I'm 23 years old. I've been doing this for more than half my lifetime. And as an older plaintiff, I certainly feel a responsibility to look out for their lives because that is truly what is at stake. We are asking those individuals who seem to be putting guns to the foreheads of all youth to not only not pull the trigger, but remove your weapon. I'm young, I'm trans, I am black, I am indigenous, I am Latino. Every aspect of my identity puts me at increased risk from the impacts of climate change. Your case, the Juliana versus United States case, calls upon our government to do something about it. This is the national security, health care, economic, environmental, and moral issue of our time, and these young people are the moral leaders of our time. We have your back. We will be in this fight with you all the way. Thank you all so much. The story of the past is already written, so it's time to move aside and let young people write the story of the future, since we're going to be the ones most impacted by that story. And so young people are gathering here to meet with these leaders and kind of remind them who's their boss. It's, it's us. The call to politicians is to stand with us or to get out of the way because we really need your support. We need that help. And at the same time, we're not going to wait for it. And that's why we're mobilizing in the streets. That's why we're taking to the courts. If we won, it wouldn't solve the whole climate crisis, but it would have one of the largest polluters in the world have to dramatically change its contribution to the climate crisis. And that's just one of the largest steps that we can take in figuring any of this out. What happens if we win, I'm gonna take a vacation, I'm gonna put out my albums, I'm gonna go on tour. It's gonna be amazing when we win. So when we win, it's gonna be the best day of my life. I'm gonna be so excited, and hopefully my mom will let me eat all the pizza I want. Our generation was chosen to guide the way to the light. Hope is, is a choice. It's something we have to choose. And to not choose that is to let down everybody who has already put their lives on the line for this, who has already lost their lives, their homes, and been displaced by this crisis. Hope is what we must hold on to to continue this fight. And I am I'm committed to doing that for the rest of, of my time on this planet. As long as it's gonna take, I wanna be 40 and not have to think about this shit anymore.